What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. So, this week, probably going to be just a tad bit longer than five minutes. We're going to talk about just the market in general. It's going to be the first week of 2022, so congrats. You guys made it. Only 12 more variants to go, and then we'll have this whole thing swept, swept under the rug, and, uh, you know, we'll be good to go. It'll just be a flu again. Just kidding. Hope they're laughing. Uh, so, uh, we're going to jump into it. We're going to do the expected move over this next week of IWM QQQ SPY. Just like we did last week, we've been drawing these out every week. Now, we broke above here. You know, again, this is where the volatility takes place. But if you guys think these numbers just don't mean anything, we ran into this and then hung out all week. Finally, we sold off Thursday and Friday. Now, actually, these little green numbers right here, what I started doing was taking iron condors. It's something we do with my mentorship group. Uh, so if you guys don't know, uh, there should be a link in the description. It's uh, So I'm a mentor, mentor on We Trade HQ. And uh, so every night I go live with them for the stock market opens. We talk about what's going to happen next day, the place where my alerts are being set. Uh, you know, because when I set alerts, that's when I buy things. Something we started doing every week, though, was uh, selling iron contracts. We're selling premium. We're collecting it. So $45 per contract. This one was $32 per contract. Now, personally, I'm only doing 10 of these. Uh, why my average was 32 Because I set it for 35 Some filled there. Some filled at, at 30 Uh that being said, there's a reason we didn't take one this next week. Uh, we're going to check the, the expected move again, but the expected move next week looked a little bit light. Now, retail weeks can do a whole lot of this, a whole lot of nothing. Like I wasn't surprised last week at all. Uh, you know, If anything, I was looking out more for just retail to run things, you know, kind of send things up. Uh, still, market makers had it priced in, didn't want to do their job, so they called it good. Uh, and you know, Getting outside that, that's what market makers need to do their job. Hang on, I'm going to move that over one day. That's why these are off. Sorry about that. So that was two standard deviations. Uh, you know, I'm going to clean these charts up, and I'm only going to worry about it. I'll delete those if we go there. So right now, as far as this goes, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So Friday was nothing. Broke just outside of it. Just have as less lines as possible. <clears throat> All right. I don't... It, it's hard. So on retail weeks, I talk about be careful. Because, you know, typically we talk about retail weeks. It's low volume, which, again, it's a lot easier to convince 100 people the price should be this versus 100 million. Uh, so we can get prices that aren't... <laughs> or they're not going to stick. And, like, I will caution everybody to be just be very mindful of your allocation going over this weekend because the way to explain just the visual is the market makers they come back to their desk and think that's adorable it's actually right here and they bring that price back down uh, and you get smoked uh, so my allocation super light over this weekend just for that there won't be any surprises but one thing i'm actually going to be doing tomorrow is buying the iron condor instead of selling so i i clicked at somebody's somebody said hey this is gonna be an awesome week and they paid me 45 dollars. they think it's gonna just go screaming one way or the other and i kept all his money and then we did it again for for this uh this week you know he says i'm he put his money where his mouth is and i said i'll take that money and i'll hold on to it uh and then his coupon expired worthless that's the options game it's basically a coupon uh you get to buy some stuff later uh but there's an expiration date, and now it's worthless. <clears throat> so, going into next week, I actually think we we do get outside. Uh, I bet there's going to be some excitement. We're not pricing in a lot. Playing the numbers game, you would sell an iron condor just outside the expected move every week. You're going to take your hits, you know. But we're not talking eight, ten trades. We're talking a thousand trades. Over that thousand trades, you're you should be rocking and rolling. Uh, me being a trader, kind of would time it with the uh, the sentiment, kind of what I think things should be. And I think I want to. I just noticed we're missing a line. I don't know. I'm, I'm this close to spending that 30, 30 bucks, and just seeing where we go. Uh, you know that that being said, as I'm saying this right now, if we open up tomorrow, so today's Saturday. I do these every Saturday because you can't do the expected moves during market open someone said do it during market hours and you can't everybody's still placing trades this is where market makers are pricing and risk this is where all the algorithms are looking like this is where everything is placed and options trade 15 minutes after uh the the close so i can't do it till friday night uh, so i just want to keep it consistent i'll do it saturday 
Uh, so, so let's just jump in. Let's see what we're, what we're talking about here, actually. I keep forgetting to clear that at the bottom. Tesla. What do you guys think about Tesla? I think I'm going to grab a couple more leaps than that. If I grab a, a 1,000 leap, I'll spend 29,000. For January of 2023, I would just need Tesla at 1,300 by then to break even and then higher. But, you know, as we go, I'll, I'll be selling contracts against it. What do you guys think? Uh, let's get to January 7th expiration, 496. Let's cruise through these. 496, 753 in tech. That's kind of a light week. Spy, 636. That's a really light week. So this, I think we were, I think every one of these was just a couple dollars higher as it started like inching in. Like, was this not eight bucks? 876? How wild. Uh, so let's just jot these down real quick. All right, so 636 on SPY. When we expire the 7th. Again, not support resistance levels. They're just not. Uh, you just gotta, if you understand the mechanics and how things work, then you understand these. For now, if you guys don't fully understand these yet, click that subscribe button. Uh, that way you can at least stick around. Subscribing is absolutely free. And right now, I don't even make money on this YouTube channel. So you can't say I'm here for the uh, the YouTube money. Alright, we are... That's a mild week. I think I am going to buy this. QQQ was 753 uh, Any more? We did hit two standard divisions there. Okay, 753. That's going to be the interesting one. So talk about a, a market crash. <coughs> Is tech going? There's a lot of market crash talk out there. Did I do that right? And, you know, last year I was talking about how I think there might be a crash this year. Or at least a full-blown correction crash. You know, it was going to be deep. You know, not like a 5% a pullback. Now, if you don't know, there are actual definitions to pullback, correction, and crash. You do not have a 30% pullback. You don't correct 30%. That is an actual crash. Pullbacks are 9%. Corrections are that 10 to 20 Anything past that, yes, that's a crash. Please use the correct terms so you don't sound like a brand new person to the market. This wasn't even five bucks, four ninety-six. I went right up there like I was gonna do something. Man, hang on. Yeah, I know traders still to this day that will that will call it a thirty percent correction. I go, oh. all right. So you just choose not to like you're just choosing to sound dumb. Makes sense. Really bugs me. People don't get those correct. What a quiet week. I'm not buying it. I don't think so. I think we're looking to kick these things off whether it's up or down and the part that has me concerned we're talking about a crash is this bright yellow box right here yeah we got above we did just close right below now this is where the institutions uh, you know obviously i can't prove it but we're seeing giant sell orders take place not your 200 hundred dollar Robinhood account right people that can actually move the market they're exiting here again if you're brand new to this channel i talked about this i have another channel called don Fran show i uh, just made this one for recording no live uh, the other ones where I go live, uh, just short, sweet, to the point. This is one of my longer videos. There was a, the Rona excuse, the Fed excuses, a couple Fed announcements inside here, all at the exact same levels. People are dumb, not people, I'd say big institutions. I thought it was one, thinking multiple, 
tying it to a cheap excuse like hey let's just not send the panic out let's just give it a good excuse so people aren't surprised why it's red and they're getting out at the same time there is a significant level in here they're getting out and on a retail week is when we finally break through but we don't even get above it so that not the best look as far as candles go that's actually a bearish look and i want to say i even have that drawn out for you guys maybe it's iwm Oh, I cleared it. Uh, let's just get back to it. All right, so super quick, quick, fast. <laughs> you take the whole span, candle, wick to wick. Here's the bottom, here's the top. Okay, not not bodies, the whole thing, whether it's a candle body or wick. You, you take the whole thing, chop it into five. You got the middle, neutral candle. Middle to the top, that is a, a little bullish. Closing at the highs, bullish, okay, then vice versa. Uh, you take the middle section, you are, uh, we'll say light red. We're just a little red, a little bearish. Very bearish. We are closing at the bottom. So here's, we break it to five. Here's neutral. Here's bearish. Here's very bearish. You know, as far as candle patterns, you can get lost. And first of all, there's like a Google, you can Google images and just learn what I just told you. I wouldn't get too hung up on that. Like traders that go and chase just those specific candle patterns without the actual context of the whole story, they just fail. It's not a profitable system. But there is some meaning behind it. That tells you the bulls showed up and the bears smacked them back down. They couldn't hang. Uh, bears still look like they're in control. So I'm very curious why we closed below here. And is there still more selling right here? Does that lead to we just kick things off to the red side? Uh, you know, one last thing before we get out of here. People are talk We talk about bubble a lot. There's been a lot of bubble talk. I even made a, a YouTube video um, why I don't think tech's going to blow up next year. I was thinking crash, now I'm kind of thinking sideways. But just to really show things off for you guys. It doesn't go back. Uh, can we get to the... Uh... There's the dot com. Okay, here's here's us blowing up right here. Okay, now that, that was a bubble. We, we can talk about that. Is that even a little bit better in tech? Here's the bubble. Pull off. And a lot of people are thinking, oh my gosh, look at that. Now that chart does look vertical, but this chart would look drastically different if it was a percentage game. R remember, as numbers go up, like this sounds very basic, but the bigger the number, the bigger the 1%. So, you know, 1% right now, $4, right? So 1% of 1,000 is $10. Imagine a $10 mover. Now that would look huge, but also it would look just bigger on the exact same chart, kind of giving off that bubble appearance. This whole thing, what you guys might think is well past this percentage-wise, is like right around here. Like, there is a case we made that we're, we kind of are just getting warmed up. Uh, but, you know, as far as the, the market crashing this year goes, let's take it week by week, day by day. It will give off warning signs. Uh, you know, I don't like to say this to brag or anything, but I told my mentorship group the day before the crash happened in 2020. Is that what it crashed? Yeah. Uh, there was something weird that happened in the market. I, I specifically told everybody, that's bad news bears. If we sell off tomorrow, it's not good. That was very weird movement. A lot of my group went short. A lot, a lot of my group just got out. And they enjoyed that ride. They didn't bag hold. And then, yeah, now if you bag held last year, it sold off. And then it came roaring back up. If we sold off again this year, I don't think there's going to be that super V recovery. We're going to sell off and we might grind our way back up. But now you got to weigh out opportunity costs. Like what if it doesn't? What if it's Cisco? What if it just doesn't come back? You're witnessing 20 years to get close. You know, what if it, there's just a lot of what ifs. And if you want to play that game or not, um, I would take it day by day. Even though I, I was thinking we were, were going to crash, I'll play that information as it comes. You know, until then, the world keeps spinning. Frisbee or ball, it just keeps going around. We're flying through space. It's all the same. Like, let's worry about it when it happens, not now. There, there's time to get out. If you are a person of bad habits, the last thing you want to do is learn that lesson in a crash. So maybe we just don't jack around this year. This is the year you're going to put a stop in and not bag hold. Yeah, let's not learn that lesson again. So... You know, I, I take when I talk about a market crash very seriously uh, because there's a lot of people that call it every day, and then they're not finally right. They're, they just finally weren't wrong. They still have an accuracy of 99% sucking. You know, because I call a crash out every day, and all of a sudden it crashes. That's just the one day I wasn't wrong. That's a crap 
that, like your whole uh, what's that percentage sucks. I'd rather say all time highs every day and then look like a champ in front of everybody because the what the three out of ten days I'm wrong. I mean, don't be silly. And let's not trade off of stupid things this year. Let's uh, understand the mechanics, how things actually work, and make some money. Every Saturday, I'm going to make this video for you guys. We're going to talk about the expected moves, if we're expecting a party or not. Someone said, do this during hours, I'll get more viewers. I do this on the weekend because you guys that are watching this are real traders. This isn't a hype channel. This isn't anything else. This is an income. And if you treat it as such, and as a business, it can be an awesome income. I, I know this, guys. Uh, so hopefully, you this is your year. You're going to kill it. So... Yeah, let's quit with the movement stuff. Let's just get on with how the market actually works. Let's buy some things that go up. And uh, if things turn around, we're going to get out or we're going to short. I will see you guys in the next video. I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, on the Don Fraud Show. We'll go live at the Futures Open and we'll see just how accurate we are. Are we going to drop this week? Are we kick this thing off with a, with a green note or, or bright red? Let me know in the comments down below. Before Sunday's Futures, if you're watching this, tomorrow, do we open green or red? I'm going to go ahead and give my guess here. Oh, man. I, January is historically a, a good month. I kind of want to say red. It has me nervous. I'm kind of thinking red. Maybe IWM is green. Spy looks like it could. That, that's a bullish flag. <laughs> that's a tough one. Tech red. I'm going to go with red. I don't have any position, so it doesn't actually matter. There's no wrong answer. Let's just play some target practice. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.